Hello guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new to my channel, hello and welcome to my channel. My name is Summer. So I want to share this with you guys. Unfortunately, I thought I screenshot it in a way that I could screenshot the platform. But anyways, if any of you know what the Z um, logo, what the platform is, please put it in the comment section so that other people can know, you know, where this was shared. And um, I screenshot this a while back, even before the elections, but I never got the chance to make the video. And now I can't even remember exactly where I got it from. But anyways, so uh, I have some of the screenshots of some of the things that this woman shared. Now, again, I always say it. I don't make a video if I do not feel a topic is important. This topic is important because there are a lot of people that may be watching this video that are not yet married or have no kids. There are some people that are married, they have kids. And the, the, the women are going through some of these struggles. But their husband may not even be aware. They are mothers, they are relatives. Or... And then on the other hand, I want to use it as an opportunity for us to speak on this, um, the lack of understanding, societal understanding of some of the way these women feel. And, you know, everybody is expected to grow up, get married, have children and all of that. But there are some aspects of it. I just want us to rub minds on. Don't forget that, you know, this whole thing is about gaining more knowledge discussing we may not agree but at least it's a topic we discussed and we can gain one or two things you know from each other so this is a, it says nigerian women share why they regret having kids this one says um this is a bimbola 44 year old maybe regret might be a strong word because i absolutely adore my children but since i turned 40 um, i had found myself asking a lot of what ifs? I got married when I was 23. By 25, I had my first child. 28, I had my second. 30, I had my third. And uh, 32, I had my fourth. Um, I spent over a decade of my life betting and raising infants and toddlers. People say that the 20s are the best time of your life. But I spent mine changing diapers, birthing children uh, and breastfeeding. My 30s weren't any better. I had to deal with those small children, school runs, teething, all the other things. Now I am in my 40s and I am dealing with rebellious teenagers. <laughs> the struggle never ends. Okay. I wonder if I would ever be free from being a mother. <laughs> no. Mm -mm. Even when they grow up and they move out, you are still a mother. You are still going to be emotionally exhausted worrying about them where are they when are they going to be home are they safe even when they've moved out you're always going to be a mother just get that in your head you're going to be a mother in your heart in your soul and in your being okay let me continue reading he said uh, be free from being a mother and just be an individual having children is one of the most selfless things you'll ever do in your life if you're selfish you can't do see let me tell you you can have children and be a mother but are you going to be a good mother? Are you going to be a good parent? There's a difference between being a parent. Once you don't produce because you are a parent, right? But are you going to be a good parent? Because there's so much investment involved in it. Forget about even the financial aspect, emotional, psychological and everything. He said, and just uh, being an individual, you forget. Let me tell you guys, right? One thing about, like if I take, for example, why I understand where she's coming from. If I take my family out for dinner, or whatever there's nothing about where is this person okay let's go this way we're all working together you're making sure this person you're checking on everybody you just you're a mother when i go on uh, if i go to a dinner with a friend completely different i am there for that dinner as an individual not at a not as a mother you are there you're just going to be free you're not thinking about did somebody go to the toilet okay they wonder that child i went to the toilet you know are they back yet are they they're taking too long in the toilet you know, that you see, there's this protective thing about us as women. When you see a hen that just had babies, you see how she becomes protective. She doesn't go anywhere too fast because she's like, okay, are they coming along? Are they not coming? Or let me keep them warm. Let me wrap them here. It makes the hen to become very held back in a way because she's not just walking by herself. But before she had the babies, you will see it's flying here, fly here, walk fast and have no worry in the world. That is one thing about what she has said there. I wish I had forged a career path, done more than go to the, to the university in terms of education and just lived. All I really wish is that I got the chance to live. If I never had any children, I would have probably been able to do more things. 
for me. Hundred percent true. Unless some people that marry a billionaire wife, so it's possible. But even is a billionaire wife, when you travel, your mind will be like, "What about my children?" When you is that part that keeps worrying about your children. Let me, like I said, there are different kind of parents. You know, a parent that is invested in their child is the or their child or children that will feel what this person is feeling. Right? Not the ones that will have children and leave for house girl, come out in the money, come back. It happens. There are some women that are house girls raise their children. Let's be honest. So those people may not even understand this because they still live like single ladies after they had children. Some women are like that. Right? Okay. And this one said, Fadakes age 37. Fadakes said, I have just one child and she almost killed me. I got pregnant three years after marriage. At the end of 30. The entire period through the pregnancy up until the birth of my daughter was hell. My husband tried his best, but he could not take the pain away. Nobody could. I had gestational diabetes while pregnant with her. Now I have type 2 diabetes. I wonder what my life would be if I never had her. For anyone that does not know, there are some women that never had diabetes in their life. They get pregnant and they have gestational diabetes. It's actually diabetes caused by pregnancy basically and then even after that baby is born they become type 2 diabetics that's it okay so this is i just want to explain for anyone that does not understand it being sick for the rest of my life is not something i envisioned for myself sometimes when i see my daughter i feel a type of resentment towards her before you judge this woman don't forget that she's just making a confession okay so let's remember that i know it is not her fault but i just get angry and cry I feel like she stole something from me. Another one, Chidera32 said, When I got married, all the women in my family spoke about how children are a blessing. That is very typical Nigerian saying, you know, and I thought so too. What they don't tell you is how children rob you of your dreams. I did not even realize until my seven-year-old asked me what I wanted to be. And then it dawned on me that I was not even close to achieving that dream. When I was in my 20s, I wanted to be an economics teacher. I never got to do my master's because I became pregnant. Then I had to wait for two years to reapply because of breastfeeding and nursing. By the time she started school, I got pregnant again. I love my children, but I realized I sacrificed everything. You see what I'm saying? She sacrificed. Some mothers, there are mothers that have their babies today, they go back to work the next day. They say they don't want to breastfeed. Some people say they don't want to breastfeed. Don't you understand? So see that she sacrificed. Another mother may not understand her plans because that mother did not sacrifice. I'm just saying everybody's story may be different. But women that sacrifice will be able to understand this, right? He said, sacrifice everything for them. And that made me resent them just a little bit. She said, resent is a strong word, but like I said, is a confession. I keep wondering what life would have been like without them. And that life sounds more like the dream I had when I was younger. Talking to my husband about it was useless because he could not understand it. He did not have to drop everything in his life to raise children. I did. And I really wish I didn't. Okay. Now. I, I think it's important for people, for women to be allowed to be dishonest. I know they didn't show their faces or whatever, but they should be allowed because whether you like it or not, this kind of honesty can make another girl say today that, you know what, I actually don't want to have children. If she doesn't want to, because let's not forget there are some women that have had children and ended up being the worst mothers in the world. That those children would are better off not being born. There are some, let's be honest, there are some mothers that if you see the way they treated their children, you will wish that she never had children. We can talk about fathers on another day, but this thing is women that this post is about. So let's speak from a woman's perspective. Personally, when I was growing up, I always had this thing in my head that my children are somewhere, you know, I was still young, right? I always felt like they were somewhere waiting for me to bring them here. So I always felt like I owe it to them to bring them here because I feel like they already exist. But I have to go bring them. What, like, I need to bring them. It is my role to bring them here. That was how I saw it. I never even saw it like they don't exist until I make them exist. When I say I'm not God, but you know what I mean? Like, decide that I want to have children. Right? And uh, as one of those parents, I can speak for myself that um, I give it everything. 
being a parent. I give it everything. Because I am a strong believer and I've said it for years. No child asks to be born. It is a choice we made. And when they come, we better be ready and willing to play our parts. They didn't ask to be born. We chose to bring them here. So our roles to play, we have to play it. We have no choice. That is, I believe strongly in that. If you don't want children, don't have them. You didn't do, and you see what they say, oh, your mama will carry you for nine months. And when people say it as if we did the children a favor, nobody but you may you bond them. <laughs> you get my point. So I'm one of those that I say, I give it 110%. Let me put it that way. I give it everything in me to make sure I do the best thing that I can as a mother for, you know, to these children that didn't ask to be born. It is a responsibility I took upon myself. And it's not easy. It's not easy. And I have sat down sometimes and I've thought about it. And I I doubt if there was a rewind that I would have children. I, I really doubt it a lot. Because I know a lot of things that I would have... Okay, let me speak right now. Okay, forget about the safety issues and everything in Nigeria. Right? If Nigeria was safe, I am someone that I would have loved to be able to go to my village and spend at least three months in a year. Like, okay, let me put it this way. I would like to go to my village, spend three months, come back abroad and work for three months, go back and stay three months, come back abroad and work for three months. When I see the state of the healthcare in Nigeria and in remote places like the village I come from, and I know the skills that I have, every day I think about how useful I would be to my community, to my village. If I could go there and visit elderly people in their homes and help people with their check their even something as small as check their blood pressures help them dress their wounds help people with the tiniest little problems i was hearing one time about an elderly man that had constipation in my village and they had to go get their hand put in his anus to bring out because trying to help him poo something that ordinary senna or what we call lactulose can just do magic there's so much people in my village, for example, do not know. And I think about what I know. And I realize how big of a deal it is. How much of an asset, that's the word, that I would be to my community. But I can't get up and go because I have children to look after. My children are not babies anymore, but they are at the point where I'm still guiding them. They've not, you know, established themselves for me to say, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the worst part, I'm trying, going to try not to make this one a long one as well. And the biggest thing for me, apart from a lot of other things that I feel like the amount of energy, effort, finance and everything it takes, you know, to care for children, for my children. If I put that into my village, I will change more lives than the number of lives that I have in my house as children. It, honestly, let me put it this way. I believe I would have been a better uh, uh, of I would have felt more fulfilled if I was someone that cared for people in my village. If I was going to my village and using my income to be like a public health nurse, charity work for people in my village, I would have felt more fulfilled than the idea of, oh, born children or no born children. I'm being honest. And then another aspect, the biggest aspect of it all is that, you know, is the area of when you think about the end, our end, your end, my end, and all of that, you think about it as a parent. You worry for them that what about when I go? Will they be okay? You know, you worry about them. What about when they, when they get married? Will they marry the right person? Will they be safe? You know, will their husband be good to them or their wives be good to them? What kind of a life will they have when I leave? But if I never had children, I believe that when that day comes, I will have no worries because I have no children to worry for. I'm telling you, that is one of the biggest aspects. And when I think about it, I'm like, I don't know if... I honestly don't believe if there's a second chance. I don't think I would have children. Personally, I won't. You know, it's gone longer than I planned. I just wanted to... I saw that I wanted to share it. You know, there are many angles to this. And I think most importantly for young people, when you hear people like us speak about how we feel about it, it will help you to think about it before you go into it. Having children is a beautiful thing, no? Don't get me wrong. But... Um, it's nice to, some people can come out here and tell you their own beautiful stories, but it's nice to hear this other aspect of it as well, so that you can then, you know, make that choice. Some of us, it's already passed. We don't have leg. We have to take it like that. But um, 
people there are some people that have not shook leg yet and they they have the choice now to know what is to come possibly come their own story may be different and then you see that mentality of no be person born you why you no go born somebody <laughs> so people think that it has to happen it doesn't have to happen even the jesus way come to teach us the way jesus no born <laughs> jesus had no kids there are pastors a lot of them you know never married had no kids and uh, you know they did the work of god without bringing children into the world so i saw that and i wanted to share with you guys here as always this is how i feel about it and, and as always whatever your opinions are please feel free to leave them in the comment section below and with that i'm gonna say thank you for watching until the next time guys bye bye bye